Hi there, this is Al24 News live from Algiers, coming up next in our news program. U.S. and EU express strong concern over China's problematic and unilateral actions in the South Sea and East China Seas and the Taiwan Strait that undermine peace and security in the region and have a direct impact on the security and prosperity of both the United States and the European Union. Plus. A new investigation conducted by the United Nations in Mosul City reveals a black report about the so-called ISIL group. And finally, Twitter deleted about 3,500 accounts that were engaged in influence and propaganda operations in favor of governments around the world. The United States joined with international allies to impose new sanctions on Belarus in response to the migrant crisis on the border with Poland and the political repression and ongoing human rights violations committed by Lukashenko regime. Nabi Khazini. The US, the United Kingdom, Canada and the European Union have imposed in a joint statement new sanctions on Belarus accusing the government of Alexander Lukashenko of human rights violations and orchestrating irregular migration at the EU's borders. Council decided to impose restrictive measures on an additional 17 individuals and 11 entities. The decision targets high-ranking political officials of the Lukashenko regime, as well as companies such as Belavia Airlines, hotels and travel agencies that have helped incite and organized illegal border crossings through Belarus to the EU. The U.S. Treasury Department extended sanctions on Minsk by prohibiting transactions and financing of Belarus sovereign debt sold on primary and secondary markets, as well as adding 20 Belarusian individuals, including Lukashenko's second son, and 12 entities to its sanctions list. The U.K. announced sanctions on eight individuals and said it would impose an asset freeze on Belarus Scully, a state-owned potash producer which is major source of revenue for the Belarus government. In Canada, the federal government announced that 24 individuals and seven entities would face sanctions under the Special Economic Measures Act. that aims to be a response to actions taken by the regime of President Alexander Lukashenko. The fresh sanctions come after migrant crisis on the border with Poland have started where thousands of migrants were blocked to enter the European Union. The US, Canada, the UK and the EU accused Lukashenko's regime of politicizing the crisis and violating human rights. And to talk more about migrant crisis, I'm joined live by Adam Ben Saeed, strategy and consultant investigative journalist who joins us live from Turkey. First of all, I'm very happy to have you in our news program. Adam, why is Belarus pushing migrants on Lithuanian Polish borders to cross the borders illegally? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, the Belarusian president, Alexander Lukashenko, is uh, reacting to EU sanctions and has been for some time. As uh, your report covered, this is... Uh, began with protests, popular protests within uh, uh, Belarus, and this is a sort of way for uh, the Belarusian president to put pressure and uh, sort of extend his uh, nearly 27-year regime. Uh, as we know, he was running for a sixth term when massive anti-government protests uh, occurred. And um, as a way of avoiding criticism of the human rights handling of the situation, he has resorted um, to the weakest point of EU asylum and migration policy. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely takes us to the, our second question. And here, uh, do you think that the migrant crisis is just a way for Belarusian uh, President Lukashenko, who has been ruling the country, as you have just said, for more than 27 years, to shift the attention of his people away from his way of governing, and sometimes he's even called as a dictator, and to focus on the migrant crisis and issue and just make out of it a national matter to unite the Belarusians? I think the point at which Alexander Lukashenko could have united the Belarusians is long past. Um, but there is definitely an element of playing domestic politics. 
uh, to distract from the economic situation, the human rights situation on the ground, uh, the right of people to self-determination and, and so forth. But there are a number of other angles, including the NATO angle, as you know, um, Russia has been somewhat active on the eastern front of Europe in the last uh, couple of months. It withdrew formally from uh, NATO on October 18th of this year. And there's also um, politics of uh, the EU when it comes to, for instance, uh, Frontex and, and how the EU manages um, uh, asylums and, and, and migrants. This, is, this has been a contention for the past 10 years and, and will continue to be until the EU essentially figures out how to resolve this uh, apparent contradiction between their values and their practice. And uh, finally, there's the um, natural gas element. Um, uh, he has threatened to... To, uh, shut down um, natural gas traveling through the Yemal Europe pipeline, which runs via Belarus. Um, with winter ahead, this is deeply concerning to, to the mo most of Europe. Uh, Russia, on the other hand, has assured global markets that this will not take place. They're also building a separate pipeline, the Nord Stream 2, uh, to Germany. Uh, natural gas and energy politics, in my, my opinion, is where it's at because uh, Europe takes the majority of its uh, natural gas exports from Russia, with the remaining uh, maybe 50% from Russia, with the remaining 30% from Algeria and Norway. Yeah, uh, this takes us uh, absolutely uh, to the final question. And uh, as we have just followed in our report, the United States, United Kingdom, European Union, and even Canada have imposed sanctions on Belarus, accusing the government of Lukashenko of human rights violations. Do you think this is going to be enough to end migrant crisis, or at least what is the alternative? Uh, I think there's considerable evidence in political science that sanctions do not work in changing state behavior. And we have multiple examples of this in international relations. Um, it's more of a step in the, st the series of escalations that countries take diplomatically to put pressure on another country. It's more towards uh, creating instability and affecting a specific group that's ruling the country. Uh, I do think the sanctions are serious, though. I think it's going to cause the Lukashenko regime to reflect and consider. But the solution um, has to come from within the EU. Yesterday, we heard that uh, the EU Commission announced that refugees and, and, and migrants should be held in special asylum processing centers for up to 16 weeks. And uh, Yes, apparently we just uh, lost the call. Uh, with uh, Adam. Thank you so much. You just joined us live from Turkey. And now measures against the new COVID-19 variant Omicron are stepped up by most countries around the world as new cases are being detected every day in a different region of the globe. Health officials are working on finding the best solution in a bid to fend off the spread of the fourth wave. Ayedi Usama. COVID-19 new variant is still making its way through the world as many countries started to expand their measures against the new wave, which created an uproar lately. World Health Organization started working in collaboration with African countries to step up COVID-19 new variant Omicron detection. The organization urged African countries to increase sequencing between 75 and 150 samples weekly. Korean Prime Minister Kim Bo Kim in a statement announced that people should work from home and avoid going out very frequently, as well as banning gatherings of more than six people. In addition, he announced that starting from next Monday, visiting 14 designated public spaces requires vaccine passes. In Germany, major restrictions will take place in the country in the framework of the so-called G2 policies. German Chancellor Angela Merkel said on a statement on Thursday that unvaccinated people are to face exceptional lockdown, which will ban them from going to cultural and recreational venues. Furthermore, German Chancellor stated that the German parliament will consider the mandate of COVID-19 vaccines. Oliver Verin, French health minister, on his last statement concerning the COVID-19 new variant Omicron, stated that his country will face a peak in case rate by late January, explaining that the fourth wave is spreading rapidly, which raises concerns of health officials. Switzerland put 2,000 people in lockdown in Geneva, 
after confirming two cases with the new COVID-19 strain. The two confirmed people with the new variant Omicron were detected in an international school in Geneva. And as an immediate response to the detection, health officials decided to put the students and the school staff in lockdown for 10 days. South African Health Minister Joe Falla stated on Friday that his country has the capability of facing the fourth wave of the pandemic without invoking stricter restrictions, although the pandemic spread in seven of the country's nine states. Joe Biden's decision to make mandatory vaccination in enterprises with more than 100 employees was overturned by the American court system. A federal court of appeal halted the requirement for employees to be vaccinated on Saturday, November the 6th. This is a major defeat for the White House occupant who is struggling to persuade his fellow Americans to develop COVID-19 resistance. The first step was to require tens of millions of American workers to get vaccinated against the virus by January the 4th, otherwise they would have been subjected to frequent testing. To another story now, where a meeting of U.S. State Secretary General and NATO top diplomats was held on Wednesday in the Latvian capital Riga. The meeting aimed to discuss Russian military deployment near Ukraine borders as the last considered as a military escalation. Let's follow this report. Tensions between the neighboring countries Russia and Ukraine have escalated to an international level. After fortifying its troops on Ukraine borders, NATO issued warnings against the Russian government, obliging them to pull back. As U.S. officials put it, Russia is likely to face harder sanctions over the last act. Antony Blinken on a statement announced that Russia is working on destabilizing Ukraine from within. We're deeply concerned by evidence that Russia has made plans for significant aggressive moves against Ukraine. The plans include efforts to destabilize Ukraine from within, as well as large-scale military operations. Now, we've seen this playbook before, in 2014, when Russia last invaded Ukraine. Blinken met in Latvia on Wednesday NATO foreign ministers in bid to resolve the issue between the two countries as they discussed what Kiev called a Russian build-up. NATO diplomatic officials pledged their support to Ukraine as Jens Stoltenberg, NATO Secretary General, called on Russia to be more transparent and de-escalate and reduce tension in the region. And we call on Russia to be transparent because this is unprovoked, unprovoked and unexplained. So therefore, Russia needs to be transparent and they need to reduce tensions and to de-escalate. On the Russian behalf, Vladimir Putin announced that his country is seeking serious negotiations with the American counterpart over assigning guarantees that will limit any NATO moves towards the eastern region of Russia as well as limiting the weapon deployment near its territories. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov met for discussions in Stockholm as concerns rise over the escalation in eastern Ukraine. Blinken's talks with Sergei Lavrov took place on Thursday on the sidelines of the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe meeting in Stockholm. It's worth mentioning that Russia has won the United States. It will respond if the U.S. pulls Ukraine into geopolitical games, while Washington has threatened serious costs for Moscow if the crisis escalates. The U.S. top military officer said that the United States is tracking enough indicators and warnings surrounding Russian military activity near Ukraine to trigger a lot of concern and that Russian rhetoric appears increasingly strident. Mark Milley declined to speculate about the kinds of options the United States might consider in the event of a Russian invasion and stressed the importance of Ukraine's sovereignty to Washington and to the NATO alliance. The seventh round of indirect talks between Iran and the United States will end today, Friday, after days of talks on reviving the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. Negotiations in Vienna aimed at reviving the Iran nuclear deal are set to be suspended Friday so the European diplomats can review proposals by Iran. And still with the same file, Iran is providing two drafts to lift sanctions and nuclear obligations the or two European powers involved in the 2015 nuclear deal. Iran stated that the deal is within reach if the West shows good intentions.
Iran has provided European powers involved in its terror nuclear deal with drafts on sanctions removal and nuclear commitments. Iran's top nuclear negotiator said on Thursday as world powers and Tehran try to reinstate the pact. Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdul Hayyan said on Twitter that negotiations in Austria's capital Vienna are seriously underway and that lifting sanctions is a fundamental priority. Good deal within reach if the West shows goodwill. We seek rational, sober and result-oriented dialogue. Under the pact, Tehran limited its uranium enrichment program, a potential pathway to nuclear weapons, though Iran says it seeks only civilian atomic energy in exchange for relief from the U.S. and European Union. President Donald Trump abandoned the deal, calling it too soft on Iran, and reimposed harsh U.S. sanctions, sparing Tehran to breach nuclear limits in the pact. Estimating that 70 to 80 percent of a draft agreement was completed when Iran and world powers last met in June, a senior European diplomat said on Tuesday that it remained unclear if Tehran would resume talks where they left off. A UN nuclear watchdog report stated that Tehran has begun enriching uranium with more advanced centrifuges in its Fordow plant dug into a mountain where any enrichment had been banned under the deal. U.S. and EU in a joint press expressed strong concern over China's problematic and unilateral actions in the South and East China Seas and the Taiwan Strait that undermine peace and security in the region and have a direct impact on the security and prosperity of both the United States and European Union. Marwa Belaywar. On what is considered to be the second high-level meeting of the United States and European Union dialogue on China, the United States and European Union expressed their concern over what they described as China's problematic and unilateral actions in the South and East China Seas and Taiwan Strait, stressing the need to manage competition and systemic rivalry with Beijing. Beijing has increased its presence in the disputed South China Sea where several countries have overlapping territorial claims. In one recent confrontation, the Chinese Coast Guard was involved in an incident that blocked two Philippine boats. The joint statement that has been followed in Washington between U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman and the Secretary General of the European External Action Stefano Sanino also mentioned that the two sides discussed the repression of China's religious minorities in Xinjiang and Tibet's ethnic erosion of autonomy in Hong Kong. The talks come amid rising tensions between the U.S. and China over Taiwan. U.S. President Joe Biden spoke of the United States' commitment to defend Taiwan after the warning of Chinese President Xi Jinping last month to return to Cold War tensions. Deputy Secretary Sherman and Secretary General Sanino decided to continue meetings in this dialogue at senior official and expert levels, with the next high-level meeting to take place in mid-2022. A new investigation conducted by the United Nations in Mosul City reveals a black report about the so-called ISIL group. The investigation exposed by the head of the investigation team of the United Nations accused the so-called ISIL fighters of committing war crimes where at least 1,000 prisoners were killed cruelly. The investigation considered the crimes inhumanitarian after collecting evidence from mass graves. And despite recent drop in oil prices, Algeria and Russia will stick to their plans of carrying oil pump and supply in January. OPEC plus countries and other allies will renew their program to increase the oil production by 400,000 barrels per day each month. Despite a recent drop in oil price, OPEC and OPEC Plus decided to continue supplying the global oil market with an additional 400,000 barrels per day this January. According to the Algerian Minister of Energy and Mines, Mohamed Arkab, this comes in accordance with the cooperation agreement signed by OPEC. The minister said in a statement, we think that the market fundamentals are resilient, despite the emergence of the new mutation of corona and the resort to the use of strategic precautions. After the meeting of the Joint Ministerial Committee, where all reports related to the conditions of the global oil market and the report of the OPEC Technical Committee were studied. Economic growth is threatened as Omicron new corona variant emerged in Europe. 
OPEP Plus stated in a declaration that it will continue to assess the pandemic, watch the oil market carefully and be ready to make immediate adjustments if required, and has set January the 4th as the date for its next meeting. Since late October, global oil prices have dropped by more than 20 percent. Brent crude futures began to fall in November after the United States and other consuming nations agreed to release millions of barrels from reserves in order to cool gasoline prices and prevent further inflation. As a result, global crude futures fell over 5 percent, which is equivalent to $77.52 dollars per barrel. Meanwhile, futures on U.S. crude, West Texas Intermediate, fell over 6 percent, equivalent to $73.23 dollars per barrel. Twitter deleted about 3,500 accounts that were engaged in influence and propaganda operations in favor of governments around the world. Most of these accounts transmitted the Chinese Communist Party's official discourse on the treatment of Uyghurs and other the advocated for government action in Mexico, Russia, Tanzania, Uganda and Venezuela. And finally, we wrap up our English news edition with some sports news in this report. So far, Eden Hazard has had some difficulties at Real Madrid, as the winner has struggled to regain his form since his arrival in 2019. The Belgian cost more than 100 million euros, but showing up to this price, tag turns out to be the difficult task. Hazard is expected to remain at the Santiago Bernabeu in the near future, as he is determined to prove himself. According to Westerlo Vice President Hassan Stinkaya, Hazard has already promised to play for the Turkish club in Fenerbahce in the future. The 34-year-old's contract expires at the end of the season, after agreeing to one-year lease extension last summer. The Uruguayan streaker, whose signature was considered a success at Old Trafford, has ambition to play for FC Barcelona before the end of his career, believing that he can continue to play at the highest level for two more seasons. FC Barcelona, whose disastrous financial situation is well documented, does not have the necessary funds to recruit the former streaker of Paris Saint-Germain, but could see Cavani on a free transfer since his contract will be finished. It has long been assumed that Erling Haaland has an informal release clause in its contract with Borussia Dortmund, which will come into play this summer for an amount between 75 and 19 million euros. Hans Joachim Watzke, the club's general manager, refused to confirm the existence of such a clause in the statement. And now let's have a reminder of our main top stories. U.S. and EU express strong concern over China's problematic and unilateral actions in the South and East China Seas and the Taiwan's trade that undermine peace and security in the region and have a direct impact on the security and prosperity of both the United States and the European Union. A new investigation conducted by the United Nations in Mosul City revealed a black report about the so-called ISIL group. And Twitter deleted about 3,500 accounts that were engaged in influence and propaganda operations in favor of governments around the world. That's all for me, Nadia Kasmi, and the rest of the team. I'll meet you again at 6 p.m. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.